five murders, two of which were the perpetrator's wife and her child, got this young Romanian man a death sentence by hanging. He first tried to plead insanity, though later he changed his statement and said all of them deserved to die, and he had absolutely no regrets. This is the story of one of the most disturbed and troubled men to ever walk South Australia. His name was Johan Balladin. Johan was born in Nadav, a small village inside a small town, today known as Kizienu Kris. He claims his father was a drunk and abusive man, which is the reason for his parents' separation. He disliked him very much and even felt too joyful when his father decided to hang himself. This is pretty ironic because of what we will see later on in this video. As a young man, Johan read philosophy books, which led him to the conclusion there was no God, although he claims God himself once appeared to him and told him he should live life doing whatever his conscience told him in order to be happy. Still a young man, he engaged in a fight with members of the Romanian Communist Party, thus getting detained in a mental hospital located in the city of Cluj-Napoca. During this time, Ioan got a degree in physics and metallurgy, and later enrolled in the Romanian army. Though he would only serve for nine months before the Soviets took Romania, he then fled to Paris. Johan would stay four years in France. Would you care to guess how many victims he attacked there? Just one that we know of. His first known victim would be a French female chemist by the name of Riva Kua. Johan explained that he didn't want to hurt her, but felt like doing so in a rage caused by Riva refusing to sleep with him. He strangled her in the night of the 22nd of February 1948. The case would remain unsolved for five years until 1953 but it could have remained unsolved forever, as you will see later. By 1951, amid the post-war immigration to Australia, Johan arrived at Melbourne aboard the SS Hellenic Prince inside the boat's cells because of a fight he had with a migration officer, maybe regarding the travel conditions, as this was a frequent complaint amongst those migrants from Paris. He would find work in grape picking, oxide welding, and laboring. Johan Balaban resided in Adelaide, South Australia. During this time, he penned a letter published in the Adelaide Advertiser newspaper, suggesting the use of phonograph discs by the Department of Immigration to teach English to new Australians. Balaban's residence was listed at Whitmore Square in Adelaide. Balaban encountered Tel Macad. A divorced woman who owned the Sunshine Snack Shop on Goodja Street, Adelaide. Thelma and her young son Philip lived above the cafe. Thelma's mother, Susan Eckland, aged 65, often stayed with them at the Goodja Street address, although her official residence was noted as Churchill Street in suburban Kilburn. John Balaban and Thelma Cat, whose single name was Eckland, tied the knot on September 27, 1952 at the Clayton Congregational Church in Norwood, a suburb of Adelaide. Unfortunately, their marriage was short-lived and faced a lot of challenges. By December 1952, they had separated and Balaban was residing in a room in Gova Street, North Adelaide. Balaban attributed a significant part of the relationship to his mother-in-law. In a statement to the police following the murder of both his wife and mother-in-law, Balaban asserted that Susan Ackland would constantly interfere and cause problems for his wife and her previous husband, and he believed she would do the same in his relationship with his wife. On the early evening of December 5, 1952, the lifeless and mutilated body of Sora Kusic, a 29-year-old Yugoslav migrant, was discovered in her tin shack at the rear of a boarding house in Torrensville, a West Adelaide suburb. The grim find was made by a friend, a Bulgarian migrant, who was one of 10 new Australians residing in the same boarding house. Sora Kusic was found lying on her bed 
with deep gashes on her throat and side, and her body bore several knife cuts. A blood-stained pink knife was discovered in a dish of water nearby the bed. The following day, police officers visited Johan Balaban's room in Gova Street and questioned him as they found newspapers reporting the murder on his bed. At first, Balaban denied knowing Sora Kusic, but later changed his statement when shown her photograph. He admitted to meeting her at a city hotel while drinking with another Romanian man, but he denied going to her room. However, after further investigations and the testimony of other witnesses, Balaban was arrested and charged for the crime. He was remanded in custody while the police gathered more evidence. In early January 1953, a hearing was held over five days before police magistrate L. E. Clark. This regarding the murder charge against Johan Balaban. After examining all the evidence, the magistrate decided that there was strong suspicion against the defendant. It was insufficient to present a prima facie case of guilt in the murder charge. The magistrate believed that no jury would likely convict based on the evidence, and as a result, Balaban was discharged from the case. He left the dock in tears. After his release, Balaban was interviewed by reporters, who described him as a pale and lined, handsome 29-year-old man after his court ordeal. He expressed feeling born again and decided to take long walks through the city streets observing people. He mentioned his ambition to write a novel about the ups and downs of his life once he earned enough money to buy a typewriter. However, a month later, following his arrest for the murder of his wife and his mother-in-law, Balaban confessed to the murder of Sora Kisic. He admitted meeting her at a hotel in Hindley Street and then going with her to her room where they consumed beer. Balaban claimed Kusic had propositioned him for money in exchange for sex, which he refused due to his strong disapproval of prostitutes. He stated that the way she asked him led to his decision to kill her. He committed the murder using a pink knife he found in her room and later left the knife in a dish of water after washing his hands. After this gruesome act, Balaban went to the Southern Cross Hotel in King William Street. On April 11th, after consuming alcohol, he went on a drunken and violent rampage along the river Torrey's banks. He got into altercations with multiple people, hitting them with an iron bar, and expressed his disapproval of their actions. Eventually, he returned to the house above the cafe on Goodchest Street in the early hours of April 12, 1953. In a state of exhaustion, and covered in blood with injuries from his previous attacks, Balaban looked at himself in the bathroom mirror. He later stated that it was at this moment that he decided to kill his wife, blaming her for his condition and the events of that night. Armed with a claw hammer, he entered the main bedroom and bludgeoned his wife to death. He then proceeded to the other bathroom, where Susan Eklund and young Philip Cat were sleeping. Balavan struck Ackland with a hammer, and when the child cried out, he also hit him, stating that he thought it was better if the child died too. Balavan then went to the sleep out in the front room, where a cafe employee, Verna Manny, slept. He attacked her as well, but she managed to escape by jumping from the window. Following the incident, several young men downstairs had a woman screams for help and witnessed Verna Manny falling from the window of the balcony sleepout, covered in blood and in great pain. The police were called, and Balaban was later apprehended by Constable McLaren, covered in blood with facial abrasions and a discolored eye. In the rooms above the cafe, Thelma Balaban was found dead on her bed, while Susan Eklund was found alive but died in hospital later, due to her compound skull fracture. Philip Cat lying unconscious from a fractured skull, was taken to the hospital where he passed away 11 days later, without regaining consciousness. Verna Manny, the employee of the cafe, who suffered from two depressed skull fractures and a fractured spine, was also taken to the hospital for treatment. After his arrest for the murder of his wife, 
Balaban confessed to the police that he had also murdered Sora Kusic in December 1952. He even provided details about the murders of Ribacoa in Paris in 1948, prompting authorities to investigate with French authorities. Balaban was charged with murder of Kusic in Torresville on December 5, 1952 and the murder of his wife at the Goodja Street House on April 12, 1953. He was remanded in custody. The trial for the murder of Sora Kusic began on July 22, 1953 at the Adelaide Criminal Court. Balaban pleaded not guilty and during the trial, evidence was presented by psychiatrists with conflicting opinions about his mental state. Ultimately, the jury found Balaban guilty after a short deliberation and he was sentenced to death by hanging, just like his father had ended himself two decades ago. In the week before his execution, Balaban attempted to strangle a prison warden, but was quickly overpowered. On the morning of August 26, 1953, Balaban was hanged at the Adelaide Gal. Security was tied around the Gal but no demonstrations against capital punishment occurred. His execution was the first one to take place in the newly converted hanging tower at the Adelaide Gal. Balavan was buried within the grounds of the Adelaide Gal in a plot known as Murderer's Row. If you ask me, I would think this man was very insecure and killed out of frustration. He killed women because they refused to sleep with him and they killed women that offered to him in exchange for money. It's almost like he thought that he couldn't have a partner if she either didn't have a child already or wasn't charging him. This is a very sick man who left Earth at a very young age, but caused enough damage before he did. The story of the pale and lying handsome murderer. The story of Johan Balvin.